Okay, so today I'm going to do a pill bottle pour. Uh, again, we are here to raise awareness for uh, kidney failure, um, in my husband's case, due to diabetes. Again, everything we do here is to get Bill a kidney and raise awareness for how much um, is involved in dialysis. My husband is on peritoneal dialysis, otherwise known as PD dialysis, and so everything I do here is now called PD art using peritoneal dialysis. Now, normally I use these guys and I will be using those in the next video, but today I'm gonna do a pill bottle pour using some of the equipment, uh, and I don't even know what this thing's called. <laughs> anyway, using some of the equipment that is used. This is used on the machine to do automatic uh, dialysis, peritoneal dialysis through a big machine that automates it throughout the night. Um, and as you can see, this has different tubes that come in and out and the machine controls what goes where. I'm gonna use it to pour paint in here and have it come out here and do um, a double pour that'll come out this way. Never done this, it should be fun. So regarding the um, paints, I'm gonna use um, paints that are already mixed up with a chemical called Floetrol. Floetrol, uh, and I believe most of these have a little bit of silicon in them as well. And the point is to give you um, cells, which uh, I'll have to show you another painting, but basically big circles and cells. The whole thing about poor painting, P-O-U-R, poor painting, is about the interaction, the chemical interaction, which is why I think it's the perfect medium to use for doing, um, raising awareness for kidney dialysis, because isn't that all just a big chemical thing, trying to get the bad things out of your body, the bad chemicals, by using uh, these super solutions and things. Um, I also want to say that all of the gadgets here that I'm using are waste uh, in one way or another. Um, so don't think that I just went and wasted hundreds of dollars worth of great stuff. All of this stuff is, has either been pre-used or was non-sterile for some reason. Uh, so going through all the many medications, not only the medication, this is before you get a kidney. Not even Everyone knows you take a lot of medications after you get a kidney. But when you're on dialysis, having all that water, because you get well, four of those big bags go in and out throughout one night, having all of that fluid go in and out of your system does a number on your stomach. And so um, the reason he has this is he has diabetes. He has no other factors there. Uh, he's a very healthy guy. He's uh, 50, oh God, I don't know this, <laughs> 57. And... Um, he really, uh, it's just diabetes took him down. Um, diabetes and high blood pressure, white those kidneys. So I'm gonna take one minute here and just um, mix up some paints, make sure and put them in the bottles. And we'll, um, I'll edit the tape and then we'll come back and do the pour and I'll show you how it looks. Rag all over it, so that's gonna be a problem. And what other colors do I have in a mixed? Mm. Well, let's use these guys. All right, this is always fun. Uh, oh, that would be nice if I were going in the wrong hole here. There we go. And now the paint, oh, they can both pretty together. I don't like that. So let's put this on here. It actually has a pretty few space. But if I get to the bottom, it's like not work. Ah, I like it. So I'm gonna let that pink come out there. The problem with this is um, obviously none of the stuff was made for what I'm doing. And the plastic tubing urgh, is like a gorilla that you're always wrestling with. So I am gonna try and get some pink in there. Ah, here we go, put that in that clamp. And then blue, what do you think? Blue and pink and gold. Can't be blue again. What else have I got up here? Silver, purple might be fun. Here, give me the purple one. All right, again, I just knocked that thing over. You can see I need to develop a um, one of these systems, like an organizer system, but for these uh, tubes. And um, I think I just gave myself a great idea. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Oh, jeez, I'm low. I need clips or something because these little bottles just don't want to work with me. I am getting lots of paint in here, which is nice. Uh, I don't know if there's any way you can see that, but... So, lots of medications for a his blood pressure. He's on four medications for blood pressure. 
Um, and all the stomach ailments. Uh, he's also, he was on insulin for diabetes, but um, through diet, we were able to uh, get his diabetes under control. Unfortunately, way too late. It took us uh, too long to do that, which is a shame because I should have figured that out ages ago and we could have avoided all this. But uh, if you're interested, I do have a diet uh, plan for all the five stages of renal failure on my blog, which is feedyourkidneys.org, or sorry, feedyourkidneys.com. So if you go to www.feedyourkidneys.com, you can um, see that. Now the trick with pour painting is what we want to do is pour a bunch of colors into a cup and then pour all of the paint in at one time. This is going to be fun. So I'm going to use a cup. These cups should look familiar when you're in the hospital. These are the ones they give you with pills in them. Again, trying to stick with the theme today. And I'm going to put some gold in and then some blue. And this is a darker blue, but I'd really rather put the pink in next. So let's do that. Pink, Ooh, but pretty pink. Uh, I love using these bags for this art too because once you mix them up they actually stay fresh for a very long time and normally that's kind of a big battle that you fight is um, trying to and here's the purple trying to uh, you have to sort of make your paints up fresh and then they have a bunch of air bubbles in them this way I can make up a, a gallon of paint and it stays fresh for a really long time so that's kind of bizarre but it's <laughs> it's actually turned out to be a good thing all right, I don't know if this is going to be enough paint. I'm going to snag some of my pre-made stuff. That seems too thin. I don't like that. Maybe a red? Ah. Okay. Uh, I haven't used these paints in a while. In fact, I spent the last uh, couple of weeks studying for a test, and I haven't been in here. And then I just revamped my whole workshop, so uh, the setup is brand new. So I'm ha if I struggle for where things are, that's why, because I just changed where everything goes. Okay, poor painting. Here you go. They may just run right off the edge, which is going to be interesting, but ooh, I need it to go that way too, don't I? I do. Okay, so it can come out a lot of places. This is going to be fun. And then I'm going to tip it. And it seems like I can't get much to go out that side. There must The thing is, uh, the valve is turned around, I think. So here we go. I'm going to let it all drain out of this crazy thing. <laughs> Again, I've, I've never done this. This is my first try. I have no idea um, if it's going to work with this thing, but um, look at that. Kind of cool. It is a common uh, technique in pore painting to use dish strainers and all kinds of things uh, to move your art around. Now, what I proved is I do not have nearly enough paint. So, because I forgot a couple. Um, this is a lot of blue, though. So I'm going to bring the, move this guy. And with this, because I need more paint. Oh, that green is gorgeous in there. Where did I get a green from? I don't know. Oh, funny. So here I'm going to drip it right on. And this is called puddle pouring, where you pour a bunch of paint into the puddles. Because I'm actually doing two techniques on one canvas because I didn't use enough paint the first time. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Not on the floor. There we go. <laughs> Excuse my language. Uh, I will have to edit that one out. Okay. Um, I did buy these, uh, I think they're called Hoffman clamps. I'm not sure. Anyway, because I just trying to get up these plastic tubings to stay where you want them has been a nightmare. So I'll put some gold in the middle. I'll put some blue in the middle because I, I just bought these new blues. They're really intense blues. Um, it's called Soho brand paint, which I, I've been painting for years. I've never heard of it. So it's been really fun to play with these. Oh, um, and because these have silicon in them, and again, the main reaction is for the, uh, it's like an oil water reaction that gives you cells and the silicon gives you the oil. Uh, theoretically, there's a lot of other things going on, but, but if I, before I do anything else with it, Heat it up, I can get the silicon to expand and give me great big bubbles and cells. It also pops the, any air bubbles left in the paint, um, which there just always seem to be air bubbles. <laughs> the whole point is to try and get the biggest cells, which are, oh wow, that's gorgeous. Those paints are in that. They went really well. Okay, so I'll turn this off. That's my creme brulee maker. Love that thing. It's the gold and the lighter blue. Where's the lighter blue? This is a really pretty interaction between these two. So I just happened to catch something. So I'm going to 
do this. Now there are a lot of things you can do with pour painting. One of the things I like to do is uh, take a straw and blow it into art. So see how pretty that comes out? And then as it sits, it'll do uh, lovely things and create a bunch of cells. Wow, that straw is big and it is giving me a headache. <laughs> um, so that's one thing you can do. You also can do just tipping it. And now at this point, I really want my drips to go down below. There's another type of art that actually uses uh, the drips. When they dry, they're called skins. And so um, it's actually kind of cool that it's so messy because you end up using the mess to do other things with later. I'm getting that weird big blue blob in the middle, which is not exciting me, but I will take care of him. <laughs> yeah, that gold and blue really did a beautiful interaction there. Uh, many people do this with a lot less forceful tipping. Uh, many people have more patience than I have. I simply am not a very patient person. <laughs> so. Now this is actually kind of cool. I can sort of stop right here, but I do have that big gold thing. And see how the edges are actually part of the painting? They're really beautiful. So now that I have that gold stripe that is just huge, and looks like it isn't going to go anywhere. String. Um, I'm gonna do a string. Well, actually, let's stick with this. I'll do the straw pour. Oh, yeah. We just paint all over me. <laughs> Okay, now it went really dark, but at least it got rid of that big gold blob, so. And I love how you just never really know how they're gonna turn out. Again, a lot like uh, kidney dialysis. You just never know how long you're gonna wait for a kidney. You never know, you know, if you're gonna have to go to the um, blood type, the uh, where you three days a week, you have to go into, um, the dialysis clinic, you really never know what's going on uh, or where you're gonna end up. And so for that reason, I think this type of painting is fun. It also is just wonderfully relaxing when you have a ton of time to kill while you're waiting years and years on the transplant list. And I think it's ironic to turn around and use uh, all this trash that basically ends up in a dumpster because to my knowledge, there's no way to recycle it. I've really looked. Now I just like totally messed it up, didn't I? Okay, well, let's go this way. <laughs> It just needed lighter colors in it. The only light things I have right now are this pink, so. So there you have it, poor painting. This is the, probably not my best work, but it's the first time I was able to use my new studio all set up like this, and it was fun doing a video for you. So again, um, pay attention to uh, kidney awareness. There are more than 100,000 people in this country waiting for organs. Uh, most of them, the large majority, are waiting for kidneys. And kidneys are the one thing where we have dialysis, which is life-saving. At the same time, um, kidneys are the one organ that everybody has two of and that you can actually easily live without one. So it's the one organ that you can easily be a living donor. Um, for Bill, he's type uh, blood type B positive. It's a very difficult blood type to match in America. Uh, it's very uncommon. And so you end up, um, the wait list is about seven years traditionally for him to wait for a kidney. It's a long time to wait. And if we had a living donor, he could go have a transplant now and, and we'd have, you know, a healthy bill for all those years. So that part's tough. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, Alrighty. I don't know. No matter what I do, I'm getting weird big blue blobs. I think it just needs another color. I think the next one I'll have a brighter color in here maybe. The pink is fun, but it's they dry much darker than you paint them. And so this is going to dry really dark with all this. But PD, poor painting, peritoneal dialysis, poor painting by Donna Honeywell. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, I'm going to have to get my stick out so I can turn this off.